Good afternoon. I'm Beth Copeland, and I'm with Georgia Christian Business Network, and we're putting God back in business. It's Take Charge Tuesday. Our business power call is today, and I'm so excited. Each week, I get the opportunity to bring to you some amazing guests, some outstanding, accomplished business folk, some entrepreneurs, aspiring entrepreneurs, and even sometimes kingdompreneurs, okay, as they are referred to themselves, um, and those that are business professionals, and I say one foot in and one foot out the door, but any rate, today, no differently, we have an amazing young man. I mean, when I tell you, it's kind of like when I meet someone of his caliber at his age, I'm always amazed that so there's a, some parents somewhere that have done an awesome job. And I thank him uh, for walking in his upbringing from the beginning because it's coming and it's fruitful right now in his life with he and his wife. I'm referring to Jason Davis. He is an outstanding young man doing great things for the kingdom. And I am privileged that he's a Georgia Christian Business Network member. And also he is our guest today on the Take Charge Tuesday Power Call. Thank you for joining us and welcome back is what I'll say to you, Jason. Absolutely, Beth. GCBN is, always holds a special place in my heart, it's a wonderful community uh, under your leadership as you lead, uh, as the Holy Spirit prompts you, but it's always great to be here. Awesome. Thank you so much. As you know, this is the year of the double for Georgia Christian Business Network, and we believe that God is purposefully bringing the double the double blessing in every aspect of our lives. We received nothing less than the double this year. And God gave us that download back in December. And that's our story. If you know the phrase, that's my story. I'm sticking to it no matter. And as my late mom would say, come what may. And there's a lot of things coming. But nevertheless, we believe that God has a plan and we are part of it. And the double, Jason, and then we're going to, switch it over to you to allow you to do an intro to tell the people who you are what you do and why it's important for them to know and then to just lead into what you're going to discuss with us today but prior to doing so i just want to say that the double is uh outlined in an acronym our six characteristics that we believe that are urgent and important in order to harness the double for your life and they're found within double as an acronym, decidedly disciplined, optimally obedient, uniquely unified, boldly believing, limitlessly loving, and excellently executed. And that's what we believe that God has given us. And if we can utilize and experience, and I said experience, the double through uh, embracing each of these six characteristics, I believe that God's going to stand true to his word, and he's going to open those double doors that no man can shut. So Jason, thank you for joining us today. Uh, we look forward to hearing what God has given you for us for such a time as this. Amen. Thank you, Beth. And uh, every time I, I hear that, as I've been tuning into uh, various uh, productions and, and content from GCBN, the year of the double is uh, is just so profound, even when you look at scripture. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, uh, while the GCBN community may know me, maybe some of you don't, but for those who, if you haven't had the opportunity uh, my name is Jason Davis. They also call me Mr. Fortify. <laughs> I'm an author, speaker, teacher, encourager, and stewardship coach. And, you know, Beth, it's interesting as I've been in my prayer time, my uh, purpose, the reason I believe God has put me here is to bring clarity in a world of confusion. Uh, that's where why he's brought me here. And then my, my mission, how I go about doing that is to challenge and inspire people 
to live a life of priority. You know, Beth, I used to say to challenge and inspire people to live a life of stewardship. But as I began to unpack that further with the Lord in my devotion time, stewardship is really a matter of priority. And so living a life of priority as God has intended, that's my mission. And then I carry out the mission and the purpose through the things I mentioned by being an author, having the Holy Spirit um, inspire me to write things as a speaker to encourage and challenge and, and, and teach principles. Also on the media front, being a podcaster, uh, I've got this kind of breaking news, Beth, some TV things lined up as well. And, um, mm. and through my book, yeah, through my books, through podcasts, we'll talk about that later too, the fortified life and TV. And so I want to maximize all the gifts God has given me to walk in my purpose, no different from what he's calling all of us to do. I love it. And you know, I'm a person with words and mm -hmm. there's so much I've even picked up and I can't wait to hear more that needs to be unpacked in just that one word, a priority. That was a major shift. Yeah. I felt like that mm -hmm. uh, stewardship. Yeah, I love it. But priority, and, and I can't wait to hear what you're going to do with that, you know. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Well, I've got a uh, presentation for uh, our guests, members, those tuning in. And Beth, when I think about the year of the double, as I was praying about what to present on, <laughs> the Lord gave me a nice little uh Nice little equation, E squared. I'm not taking you all the way back to math class, Beth. Some people just, oh my God, Jason, math. No, I'm not taking you all the way back. But E squared, uh, we're going to talk about becoming an encouragement engineer. One of the ways that we can experience the year of the double, I believe uh -huh. that, is by our encouragement. By our encouragement. Come on. So that's what Come we're going to get into today. I love it. I can't wait. And I love your title, E squared. Mm -hmm. I thought that was awesome. Unique. Very, very unique. Yeah. All right. Here we go. So today we're talking about um, becoming an encouragement engineer. Uh, e squared. That's what it, that's where the, the double E comes from. You know, Beth, my wife, Desola, and I, we attended uh, Georgia Tech, the Georgia Institute of Technology. And if you uh -huh. were an electrical engineer, they called your major a double E. Ah, I gotcha. <laughs> so it, just, it was just uh, terminology on campus if you're an electrical engineer. And so I was just remembering that. And I said, Lord, well, why, how come you, you know, I know I wasn't an electrical engineer. I was a business major. DeSola was biochemistry. And so, Lord, what, what is it about engineering and you reminded me jason the year of the double and one of the ways we elevate is becoming an engineer of encouragement wow i love it that is yes. so unique i love it love it love it oh yes and one of my favorite um words uh letters is e and mm -hmm. i love all e words so mm -hmm. that is wonderful and encouragement oh my god uh, people don't understand uh, how that is fuel, mm -hmm. that is energy for moving forward in business and in life. But let's see Absolutely. what God's given you for that, for us yes. for, out of that. And so just a little bit about me. I mentioned this a little bit earlier, Beth, but so DeSola and I, we just celebrated our seventh wedding anniversary this past March. Uh, so speaking of the year of the, the double uh, Beth, uh, you know, especially when we look at the word of God, when when a husband and when a man and a woman comes together in marriage, there's a there, it's it's not just the the natural thing, but there's something supernatural about marriage that God has ordained. So I'm experiencing some of the double Beth because of the 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 woman that I am in covenant with. <laughs> so oh my is, God! Yeah, what so a beautiful oh oh what a powerful leader. <laughs> and, and just a, a beautiful statement. And I love it when men talk about their wives, uh, their wife, 
okay? <laughs> Especially when she's not present. You know, sometimes there's a tendency to say the right things and get them all right because she's there listening, okay? Mm -hmm. But when she's not present and you're still saying those things and being bold in what you say about your wife, that is, you know, your answers your, to prayers, your, God answers prayers. He, he, he says in his word that your prayers will be answered by how you treat and respect and honor your wife. Do you know that? Yes, I was actually, that was one of the scriptures I was thinking about. Beth, that that's I know it doesn't say that in that verse, but that's kind mm -hmm. of a version of 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 double there. If yeah. you're, you're a man, the way you treat your wife. And again, if you want to have a, a kingdom marriage the way God ordained, then that's one of the ways you can experience the double is by treating uh your wife right. And and obviously the vertical relationship with Christ, Beth, like I don't want my prayers to be hindered. So <laughs> mm -hmm. no, no, because he said that they would definitely be. And I and I see opportunities where people want, and I'm gonna let you get into mm -hmm. um what you shared uh with us today, Father. I don't want to hold it up, but this is so key for a man to make a statement like that, um, to take advantage of it so we can put this out in the wavelengths, but when you're confident in it, being a young man as well, seven years of marriage, to speak of her on this level and to understand the value of speaking of her and praying for her is only going to bless you, you know, for sure. Yeah. Thank you. That's and give a model it. for so many others that need it. You know, <laughs> we need we need that. Young right. and old. Young <laughs> and old. <laughs> Well, I know I've got a long way to go, Beth, but uh, hopefully these first seven years, I'm, I'm doing something right. <laughs> yeah. Well, as I, I mentioned before, I talk about purpose. And, and for me, uh, that's to bring clarity in a world full of confusion. One thing I do, Beth, constantly is ask the Lord for wisdom. A, another mentor of mine, uh, Boyd Bailey, who also is an author, and a speaker does a lot of work in the nonprofit space. His uh, daily devotional is called Wisdom Hunters. And I'm always reminded of Boyd because he, one of the things he talks about is don't just, it's one thing to ask for wisdom, but shape your life around be, be a hunter of wisdom. I think about the Discovery Channel, Beth, and, and how, you know, the lion is, is getting ready to pounce on its prey. And that's the way. We need to run after wisdom. And, and so what God allows me to do by walking in my purpose, one of the ways I bring clarity in a world full of confusion is you always hear me be a proponent of and, and stop the floor for we need wisdom in business, in our relationships, uh, in everything that we do. Uh, let, let the wisdom of God be a, a life management system for you and and so that's i was talking about purpose earlier and mission to to my mission is to challenge and inspire people to live a life of priority i talked about that shift earlier beth it was stewardship and that's still a piece of it but really yeah. when you know mm -hmm. stewardship is a nice 20 dollar word sometimes that we hear and we automatically go to the money piece but money like many other things is a priority um, mm -hmm. whether it's intentional or, or we just let things happen and it's really priority. That's what it boils mm. down to. Yeah. And, and, and the lack of priority yes. is what I'm thinking is just flying by the seat of your pants, not having a strategy. And mm -hmm. then you keep saying these powerful words that are, are, are so true to what you're speaking and to our experience in the double is wisdom. Is so mm -hmm. urgent. Is is applied wisdom, seeking wisdom, uh, walking in wisdom, uh, which we know where wisdom, the root of wisdom comes from. So that is good. I love what Toby over on Facebook side of the house. We have some participation. And thank you guys for joining us there. And Bianca, thank you for supporting us here on Zoom and Facebook as well. 
over in our Facebook group. But T Toby says, God is syncing things up. Thank you, Lord, for confirmation of your word. Mm -hmm. Thank you so mm -hmm. much. That is a true confirmation in what you've given us thus far. Amen. That's what the wisdom of God does there to lead, guide, and direct. It's one of the mechanisms that, that he uses. And then Beth just kind of rounded it out. The way that I accomplish or am accomplishing the, the purpose and carrying out the mission God has given me, and that's I uniquely blend faith, business, and finance in the things that I do, whether I'm speaking, uh, writing. Uh, my first book, which uh, GCBN was a big part of the launch, Fortify, being rooted in God's plan for work and business. Beth got some sneak peeks uh, in advance before the book came out. So big thank you to you, Beth, and the rest of the community for being a part of that launch back in 2021. And so speaking, writing, coaching, and teaching, uh, that's where I uniquely blend all those elements together. And I don't know if I'm letting the cat out of the bag or telling the secret too early, but I can't wait for book two. I understand it's in the works. Yes, no, that's not letting it out the, the bag uh, at all, Beth, because it involves wisdom. Uh, so I'm at work on my, my second uh, book. It will be a 31-day devotional, and it's going to be talking about walking in the wisdom of God daily. When you actually look at a lot of the translations and scripture for the word words used for wisdom, it uh, translates to, to skillful living. And so really the devotional will be encouraging us as Christians in the marketplace, whether you're in corporate or if you're an entrepreneur or business owner, encouraging us daily to walk in the wisdom of God and how we can live skillfully day to day. You know, when it comes to hiring and firing, building teams, do you do the merger acquisition? How do you make um, a financial, uh, how do you change your perspective? There's so many things, Beth, that we need the wisdom of God and it helps us live skillfully. So it is not too early, Beth. Thank you for, <laughs> for calling that out. Awesome. I love it. It's going to be a great read, I'm sure, because Fortify is definitely, and honestly, I meant to pull it uh, prior to the show so that I could show it off a little bit. But uh, if you have a copy at the end, we'll definitely want to direct some people to that that mm -hmm. area. And Bianca, be prepared. We're going to do a giveaway for Fortify as well this afternoon. Okay. Awesome. It sounds good to me, Beth. Awesome. Beth, we're talking about E Squared, uh, becoming an encouragement engineer. And I've made a life observation. Um, I'm 36. I know I haven't lived a super, super long time, but I've lived a little bit. And here's one of the things I found, Beth. We can be fine 23 hours and 59 minutes of the day, just 24 hours in a day. And yet mm -hmm. we can become discouraged in a flash. I don't know about you, Beth, and I'm sure many others out there, whether they're watching live or will watch the recording, I'm amazed even at myself when I get some news and depending on the nature of the news in 60 seconds, I can go from, man, I had a great day, wonderful day to what happened, angry, anguish, sadness, whatever you want to call it, whatever adjective you want to use. And I'm just amazed at how quickly the tide changes. And so, Beth, one of the things we're going to get into, and there's this kind of idea I want us to think about, as quickly as we get discouraged, we need uh -huh. to be encouraged. Yeah, yeah. You know, God is so good because God has a plan and we yeah. are a part of it. Uh, Toby was on the platform, Toby Carvana, and I was trying not to bring it up, but, you know, she spoke. <laughs> a uh, comment from the Facebook side of the house, but she just wrote her book and I've got it. I can see it right now uh, from mm -hmm. where, because I had it out earlier this morning. It's so odd because even though I knew your title, but not the content of everything. And just this morning, I looked at her book and I said, Toda, 
because I went to her encouragement conference uh, a couple mm. of weeks ago, a few weeks ago. And here you are, <laughs> you know, already <laughs> confirming your God's word to me back then. And I know it's not about me, it's about everyone, but you're telling my life story in this picture, in this one slide right here. You know, mm. it's how our joy is stolen from us because her book is really about joy. And uh, Still Back Your Joy is the title of it, Toby Carvana. But you said from 23 hours and 59 minutes, I've had a perfect day. And then in, in that one minute of a flash, news flash, it's gone in 60 seconds. This is amazing how you're talking here. Keep going. I just had to comment there. You know. No, that that's profound. And I, I, I need, it sounds like I need to get Toby's book too. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. I love but it. That, that was just, it's a life observation that, that I made. Um, it, it what's interesting. That's my life observation. We think about the, uh, the founder of Chick-fil-A Truett, Kathy, he made a business observation. One of his most uh, famous interviews, Beth, that he did was they were asking him and talking to him about leadership and how he built Chick-fil-A. And, and the interview kind of went along the lines of this, you know, true, you built such a strong organization, you know, high revenue, but the people and the lifeblood of the organization, and they were just in such an awe. So they asked him a question, Beth, and ironically, it had to do with encouragement. And so they asked Truett, how do you know when somebody needs encouragement? Like, how do you know that? And he looked matter-of-factly at the interviewer, Beth, and he said, as long as you're breathing, you need encouragement. <laughs> as long as you're breathing. It's not based on what you went through or not, though you could say that. It, you know, there could be an incident you could be maybe trying to psych yourself up. You know, I think about sports, you know, maybe a pregame speech. Maybe you're the, a keynote or a workshop speaker and you're about to go mm -hmm. on stage or maybe you're about to address your employees and it's an important announcement. But either way, if someone is breathing, as long as there's breath in someone's lungs, they need encouragement. And so what Truett Cathy was talking about was consistency and encouragement. We'll unpack this a little bit further, but that is just something that stuck out to me, Beth. So I had my life observation, but true at Kathy, his business observation, even in leading people was, look, as long as young men and women, you know, of all ages, young, middle-aged, uh, seasoned, as I'll call it, I won't call it older, I'll call it seasoned, uh, no matter where you are in your life, if, if, if you have breath in your body, you need encouragement. I love it, love it, love it. I am so excited about listening to you uh, because someone said this quote recently to me, or maybe I saw it in a meme or something like that, because mm -hmm. encouragement, this is Beth Copeland, uh, it is fuel, well, I, I say it like this, encouragement brings about joy. Mm -hmm. And joy is fuel for the soul. God yes. gave that to me. And that's mm -hmm. what it is. And, and, and you need that because encouragement is energizing. And I told Toby after, at a decent time after her book was already done and everything that I wrote about joy. The name of my book from 20 years ago is Joy Seekers. And mm -hmm. one of the models that are within that book is that how encouragement it breeds further encouragement and I put a cycle in I need to update it because we got more, better graphics today than we had 20 years ago yeah. um, but it's like a continuous cycle and the errors <laughs> are going I encourage others they're encouraged and they go encourage others or something like that but the model is it's urgent that to feed encouragement because yeah. if you don't there's discouragement that's going to happen and it's immobilizing. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, you're going to love this. Today's going to feel like a blast from the past, Beth. You're going to love it because there's multiple things that you said that we will touch on today. So it's just further confirmation from the Holy Spirit for sure. 
And so, Beth, we're left with this question. You started to get into this, but sometimes in the moment, Beth, or depending on what we're dealing with, and let's be honest, Beth, in the marketplace, you know, we hear words like encouragement, and sometimes we can think like, oh, that's some, that's kind of fluffy. Like in business, we think about things like ROI and, you know, revenue and profit, all these hard, you know, tangible mm-hmm numbers and when we hear things like encouragement and, and as business owners or in corporate we think something like encouragement is fluffy so many times we're like this guy in the picture best so how do we overcome discouragement you know sometimes mm-hmm. we throw our hands up in the moment and so that that's the question we're going to answer today Beth and that's how we do that is God's word shows us how to become an encouragement engineer. And that's what we're going to dig into today. And Beth, as I'm going, feel free. You're absolutely, I'm telling you right now, you're going to be triggered in the spirit because you've already <laughs> met, you've already mentioned a couple of these before. So we look to God's word. Listen, motivational books and everything, they're great. But I found, Beth, when I read God's word, so sometimes we'll you know, the movie or the book or whatever, it'll remind us of something from scripture. But I also find the inverse, Beth. Sometimes also I'll read the word of God. The Holy Spirit will highlight a scripture and I'll jump off the page and then I'll get the dovetail and oh man, that reminds me of this book and that book and this movie and that TV show and that quote. And so there's a figure eight that occurs and that's just the power of the word of God because it's living and active. And so I just wanted to point that out. Uh, Whoa. Well, yeah. <laughs> you, you know, I'm, 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 my mouth is going to be sore because you just got me just smiling. I mean, I mean, really, my jaws are going to be like, I, I just can't stop with the confirmations of how this is an on time assignment for you. I'm assured of that. So continue. And I'm going to try to be really quiet, but I <laughs> promise you that. Okay, so let me say this then. Yep. The the word is is the truth. Yes. And the truth is what sets you free. Mm-hmm. What we have to understand about the freedom of God's word of truth, if is if we're speaking, a lot of people talk about this my truth. Mm-hmm. If your truth doesn't align with God's truth, which is God's word, then it's a lie. Mm-hmm. I gotta make that meme up. Because people yeah. are thinking it's okay to say my truth. Right. Well, it's my lie if it doesn't align with God's word. And it won't be lasting encouragement. Mm-hmm. And, and I see the direction you're going, and I'm going to let you continue in that vein. But this is so, and I love the presentation slide. It's just God's word shows us how to become an encouragement engineer. Simply said, powerfully exemplified. Yeah. Amen. Let's dig into it. Because the light, the light, go back, go back, go back, go back, (laughs) go back. Because God said somebody's not going to hear you because Mm -hmm. the light, you see how the light, it shines Mm -hmm. light. It upon does. it gives truth it gives direction it gives passage for you to continue going forward i think we're gonna have to already know we're gonna have to do a part two on this but you keep it coming <laughs> i know keep it coming you know we do this yes. every time we get together indeed we will absolutely okay. do a part two so here's as we talked about my life observation we talked about true kathy's business observation now let's get into the biblical observation we're going to look at a couple of scriptures and we're going to talk about the anatomy of becoming an encouragement engineer so this is hebrews 3 13 and this is the amplified version the amplified edition uh, but continually encourage one another every day as long as it's called today. And there is an opportunity so that none of you will be hardened and to settle rebellion by the deceitfulness of sin, its cleverness, delusive glamour, and sophistication. That's Hebrews 3.13, the Amplified. 
as I was reading the scripture, Beth, uh, and the Holy Spirit began to, just like on the last slide where the, the light just comes and he, he highlights something. And he highlighted something for me about encouragement. And that's what kind of gave this journey of becoming an encouragement uh -huh. engineer. So when we talk about becoming an encouragement engineer, you can take the first part of that verse. So, so the lesson one is encouragement. You talked about this earlier. Encouragement should be continual. The first part of that verse says, but continually encourage one another every day. So when you put together what Truett Cathy was saying, when you put together what I noticed and you look at the word of God, which is where we derive truth from, Beth, it's clear here in the word, continually encourage one another every day. E encouragement does not stop. It's not like a, a stopwatch, Beth, where we, you know, up, oh, up, oh, time to encourage and nope, time to stop. That's not the case. Jason, uh, this is, I see what you <laughs> meant. Because this is, you know, you knew already from yes. when I said what I said earlier about yeah. the continuous uh it just evolves into something else. And it's, uh, it's, it's the cycle that you want to continue to keep people going. That's why you need to be careful about being uniquely unified, which is our U in the double uh, acronym for the characteristics that we want to embrace. Uniquely unified. If you're not connected with the right people in your, inter, your, your personal uh, circle, you're going to be discouraged or defeated. You may think, oh, well, you know, these my cuts or my buds or whatever, or my, uh, what do you call them? Uh, my partners, or I don't know what you call them today. <laughs> but, but if they're not growing in the things of God, they're not serving you well. Right. They're not serving you well. And the thing that you're saying right here it should be a continual flow of encouragement coming to you, not to continue in the things of the ways of the past or when you were a child, you spoke as a child, but continual encouragement to come forth and allow God's truth to sink in you so that it'll produce truth and you'd operate in that truth and, and you'll grow. And there's amazing things that are for you. Let me tell you some of the things that are happening over on Facebook, okay? Mm -hmm. So sure. Carmen Codwell is in the house. I was talking about her last <laughs> night with Dr. Jess because uh, we were. she was getting her to do something. She told me she was going to do something. I was like, oh, okay, and I'm going to be present when she does it. And I was like, I'm going to learn some new things, you know, some new words and sayings that are powerful to say. <laughs> She's amazing, okay? She taught me life be life, and, and it does. <laughs> it it life. Like Let it. me tell you. And some other things. But she says, encouragement engineer. I love that. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's amazing. Uh, you could even title the book if you wanted to, E2, encouragement <laughs> engineer. True. I'm serious. That's, That's just my two cents, you know. Right. And then Toby went on to say, the root of discouragement is not believing God's word. You know, mm. when there's that, that right there is so powerful, agree? Because it, if you're not believing the truth of God's word, it's a bondage. It keeps yeah. you defeated. It keeps you in uh, that cyclical behavior of repeating uh, things of the past or re uh, flushing. And you never, you're just recycling stuff and you're not growing outside of the mold, you yeah. know? Yeah. Absolutely, Beth. And that, that's what, what's getting at here. You know, we, we keep coming back to the, the truth. Um, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life and no one comes to the Father, yeah. but through me, but by me. And, yeah. and so the continuous nature, when we understand God's word, and we look at uh, concepts like encouragement, we, get, we can glean a lot from the word of God. You mentioned uh, people. I think it's 1 Corinthians 15, 33, Beth, bad company corrupts good character. And so when you're around people that aren't uh, helping cultivate an environment 
of righteousness uh, in that same environment, how are you being encouraged? In fact, I would posit if you're being corrupted with the bad character, that's going to be a good recipe for disaster. And part of that recipe for disaster involves dis discouragement. And so I just thought about that with uh, even First Corinthians fifteen thirty three. You, you, you know, I, yes, uh, uh, yeah, I, I love it, and I love the translation that you utilize because uh, uh, when you think of a bad association uh, produces, you know, um, it, it does corrupt good character. But the behavior that follows is my late mom, that's First Corinthians 15, 33, but my late mom said it like this, uh, feathers of a kind flock together. <laughs> and then another thing, yeah, yeah, is uh, association brings about assimilation. You yeah. may go in uh, with coming from something totally different in your upbringing, believe in a thing, but the more you are associated with those of another persuasion of truth, their truth, not God's truth, if you're not strong, what's going to happen is you're going to start identifying with them more than mm -hmm. the truth that and that God has given you to set you free, and then you become in bondage. You start doing the things they do, and the things that they do will take you and make it in bondage, put you in bondage. There has to be a separation. Mm -hmm. If you're not uniquely unified with those that are following God's word, then you're headed according to what you were saying, and I wholly agree, totally agree, to destruction. An another thing I want to say about you, Jason Davis, you're on the crust of millennium, right? So you're right there in there, right, as a millennium. And people who say, oh, they're this and they're that, I'm going to tell them they haven't met Jason Davis, okay? Because <laughs> the wisdom that you're sitting out here pouring out at 36 years of age, I can show you some people that are almost twice your age and still don't get this, you know? Mm -hmm. So just know this, you can't say all millenniums are all of right. this, or all this. You can't stereotype everybody and put them in the same basket because you're proving that today. So over on the Facebook side of the house, Toby said, we have to believe God's word over what we see or hear. Mm -hmm. We walk by faith, faith and not, not by sight. sight. Oh, yes. A few more uh, lessons to unpack from uh, this scripture and one more. We just have four lessons and in a part two i actually have an additional probably about four beth so this is perfect for setting up a part one and a part two awesome um, the second lesson and we were again you can see there's a stacking effect we're building a foundation um you look at the the middle part of this verse as long as it's called today and there is an opportunity today you have a golden opportunity to encourage someone so Beth, there's what there's encouragement being continual. And that's one thing. It ought to flow. But how do we make it flow, Beth, is taking advantage of the opportunity. You know, sometimes mm. we're hustle and bustle of life, of business. You know, we, we get busy like Martha. Beth. We get busy like Martha. And we're in the midst and we're just trying to move, make things happen, make business deals, shake things down. And there's somebody more than likely, Beth, that's coming to our, 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 our view, our purview, our environment of that day. And there's an opportunity. And I know for me, when in reading this, I felt convicted at times. I'm like, how many times have I just missed an opportunity to encourage someone? There's tons of ways. I mean, there's uh, a compliment, uh, sending somebody a, a, a card, um, 
you know, giving somebody a gift financially, then these aren't the only ways. These are just to stimulate other ways. So that that's that's what this middle part was like. Hey, encouragement is continuous, but you've got an opportunity today now. So that's our lesson number two. Today is now. Mm -hmm. Today is now. You, you know, the opportunity that we miss is when we don't speak the truth in love as well. I yes. think sometimes um, we think that encouragement has to be, as you said, and that's why it's considered by um, the, I call it the heart skill. I mean, a soft skill rather <laughs> right. than a hard skill is because yeah. we think it has to be fluffy. But encouragement is also giving feedback, speaking mm -hmm. the truth in love to encourage someone. And, and, and society today has, um, how, do you, how do I say it? They have um, discounted the urgency of speaking truth in love and also Christendom. We right. have have added to that as well because we feel sometimes as christians if you're not agreeing with me you don't love me and and are are you not being uh, a christian a christian mm -hmm. wouldn't say that to me yeah, yeah we need to put a little salt on that and you need to take a bite by that, you know, I mean, right. serious, because yeah. we care about you. And because you love people, you don't want them to continue the same trail. So mm -hmm. the opportunity is today, I love the way you highlight it and emphasize today. Now is the time right yeah. now mm -hmm. to make a difference in someone's life. It could change the trajectory of their life, the path that they're on. Mm -hmm. If you just speak the truth in love, yeah. Yes. I love that that aspect of it too, Beth, because like you said, there's this tendency to, oh, encouragement, that's that's soft and fluffy. But Beth, being a uh, an athlete and played Division One college football, and yes, I know some people are like, oh, well, does it always, when you get into sports, people think, oh, the profanity and all that. But I got to tell you, Beth, some life-changing moments for me was – you know, a play that I didn't make or that I missed out on the field of play and a coach pulling me aside saying, hey, Jason, you know what? You're better than that. He didn't have to call me outside my name or be disrespectful, but just reminding me of who I am. Jason, you, you lift, you work out, you run, you're big, fast and strong. I need you to play like it because I know that you can. And I know that wow. it's and what you just displayed a second ago that's not maximizing your potential. I know you're better than that. And so that's just an example from some of my coaches over the years, Beth playing football, basketball, and running track. That's exactly what you're saying is, hey, you know, young, I'm just using as an example, I always use Billy and Sally. Hey, Billy, hey, Sally, there's greatness in you. And what, what you just showed, I know that you're better than that, not just because of what I'm saying, but because I know what God has put in you. And so it's time to realize that potential. We see it in scripture too, Beth. Moses was judging the people. Jethro, his father-in-law, pulls him aside. Hey, Moses, this thing has become too much. It's going to lead to burnout. Uh, he, he had a conversation. Uh, Paul calls out Peter for treating the, the Jews and the Gentiles. He's acting one way and he's being a hypocrite. Paul calls him out. Um, the apostles having debates and arguments, and I believe it's uh, in, in the book of Acts, uh, and even James himself saying, hey, we're debating over, you know, the, the law and grace. And so one of the things, you know, people say that, Beth, like you said, um, oh, man, that's, that's not being a good Christian. It's like, no, you need to look at every, everything. The Bible talks about every account, not just what you like. There was absolutely debate in scripture. There was admonishment in scripture. It's there. And those are just a few examples I pulled out. Uh, somebody was doing something a certain way. Somebody came alongside them and said, hey, there's a better way, or maybe you might want to consider doing something differently. So Moses and Jethro is one example, Peter and Paul another, and then just the apostles having debates over uh, the law 
and grace. And, and, and I love how you're positioning that. Mm -hmm. And we're still talking about encouragement be mm -hmm. because what was being reduced was the value that they had to bring as disciples. Mm -hmm. And if you're having infighting, just to hone in on that one for a minute, mm -hmm. uh, if you're having infighting, there are people watching from the outside. Your expectation is that you'll be leadership. And yeah. if you're not in co a spirit of cooperation, that is going to be detrimental to your growth and the power within you being exercised, as well as the onlookers. You're giving them permission to have infighting in their lives as well. And I love this because we're still talking about encouragement and the opportunity is if we see someone going down the wrong path, the model that you used as a coach to you, pulling you to the side, that's called accountability. Yeah. Accountability, giving an account for your ability. Do you, do you hear me? Because you're not mm -hmm. utilizing your ability to the full potential. Walk with me. You, you hear me? Account ability. I'm mm -hmm. asking you for an account of your ability. If you're not growing in the things of God and going in his direction, if you're caught up with the bad, wrong crowd, and I speaking to you and saying, mm-mm, that's not serving you well, okay? I, it's just like, oh my God, they love me. They care enough about me to speak into my life, to see me off the wrong track and to put me on the right track. But the way that you said it is, is because you're putting in the work. Mm -hmm. And when you're putting in the work and it's not producing, that means that there's an application issue as well. Are mm -hmm. you applying it? where you need to apply it. If I'm putting in the work and it's not producing, I've got to do a, a self-evaluation to see where the work isn't producing, okay? This is wonderful. You know, am Absolutely. I rightly connected and aligned with God? You know, you're blowing me away a little bit today, <laughs> but just, just go ahead. <laughs> The uh, lesson number three here, again, as we continue to step through the scripture, we're at the so that. Now, Beth, quick uh, Bible lesson here. I know you're aware of this, uh, having been a teacher uh, of the word. Whenever I think about Marvel, the Spider-Man, Spider-Man okay. would sense danger. He gets what's called Spidey sense. He could sense danger is like a sixth sense. Well, in scripture, um, when we're reading um, a break in the in a paragraph or in a in a scripture, it does the same thing. So if we go back to English school for a second, Beth, conjunctions, and, but, or, nor, or, therefore, so. If we see those words, pay attention. The we our spiritual tingles our spiritual tingle tangle should be going off because this is the part of the scripture that hey i said some things now i'm going to tell you why well why encouragement so we talked about the cadence of encouragement continually we talked about uh the uh let me go back here for a second so we talked about it being continuous we talked about having an opportunity now we get to well when you do that or when you don't do that Here's what's at stake, so that none of you will be hardened into settled rebellion by the deceitfulness of sin, its cleverness, delusive glamour, and sophistication. I like the Amplified here, Beth, because the Amplified always puts a little bit of extra sauce on the hot dog, per se, with some of the things in brackets. And that's why I chose the Amplified, because it really goes a step further like look there is a hardening that stands at the door of you not encouraging others so the lesson here is encouragement actually softens the heart and a lack of encouragement actually causes your heart to be hardened we've been talking about character the company you keep 
That's what's happening, Beth. When we're not encouraging, we're opening the door of opportunity for our heart to be hardened. And when our heart is hardened, then it's a gateway to sin. Wow. Wow. And that is so true. I've seen that numerous times. The mm -hmm. opportunity for encouraging others softens my heart, but it also is too it's like the the word of God is powerful and mm -hmm. sharper than any two edged sword. So it hits this way and it hits this way as well. And what I'm getting this visual of as you determine uh, uh, and you walk through this particular scripture and this uh, segment of it is that none of you will be hardened into settled rebellion. When you see people with a hardened heart, uh, it's really rebellion. Yeah. is at the root of that, I believe. I, I really believe it. And by the deceitfulness of sin, because sin is deceitful, it will cause you to think that you're right and everyone else is wrong because it's clever, it's delusive glamour and sophistication. I love Amplify for this transaction here, definitely. So when we think of encouragement and the benefit, and we're talking about it's definitely a soft skill, but the impact is on the hard numbers that you're looking for, mm -hmm. okay? Is winning people uh, through influence is because you want to be known as an encouragement engineer, mm -hmm. you know? And it will cause you to find favor with people because people really deep down desire the truth. It's mm -hmm. how you share the truth with them that makes it an opportunity that they can hear you. If you let people know how much you care before we try to share how much we know, and I think, is it a Covey statement that says that? Um, I believe uh, people, so. It might have been yeah, so. and I think he's been accredited with it. I've heard some back and forth on that, but all I'm saying, it is true is people really need to know that you have my best interests at heart. Now, when you feel some rejection from the truth, more often than not, it's because that heart is so hardened mm -hmm. and sin has caused them to be deceited, deceit, deceited by, is captured, you know. And that's a, 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 what I used to call a tough nut to crack but it can be cracked. <laughs> Sometimes God has to do a little spank spank, yes. you know? Yeah. I, I think okay. about, uh, uh, back in the day, uh, Beth, where uh, the, the 49ers, the uh, gold rush of 1849, well, they had to do a lot of digging to get to the gold. And so they, they would take the, their axes and their picks and they constantly have to, to dig away at, in the ground just to get to what was underneath in the gold. And, and I think that's what happens a lot of times with um, the hardening of the heart is, uh, especially if, if we claim we're a follower in Christ. So the spirits inside of us, let's use that, you know, as the gold that sits there. But sometimes to your point, Beth, is we, we've got to have a renovation of the heart. And we actually through, you know, repentance and restoration and forgiveness that we got to take that ice pick and pick away at all that hardness. And like you said, it's, it's tough to, to crack, but, uh, but, but through forgiveness, repentance, restoration, reconciliation, it's possible. Awesome. I love that. You know, I'm going to let you get that final point as a part of our closeout, but Toby over on the Facebook side of the house says, thank you so much for this encouragement that I am on track, Jason Davis. Uh, <laughs> we really need to connect. And I would like to highly recommend that, um, that you two connect for definite. Okay. And so Bianca's sharing or will share uh, the information over on the Facebook side of the house. So Toby, I recommend you reach out. Also, mm -hmm. um, I think she's got some good participation over there. So you want to capture the names over on that side of the house okay. um, so that we can spin for a copy of the Fortify book. But in addition to that, Jason, 
we're going to gift you with a copy of Toby's Encouragement Journal in addition oh, to wow. another gift that Bianca will get out to you and that she often does immediately after the show or, or within a day or so uh, to just appreciate you for being on the Take Charge Tuesday Power Call. I'm going to allow you to close us out with your fourth point, but mm -hmm. prior to do so, doing so, I want to just share a couple of things that are up coming on the GCBN platform. On our Wellness Wednesday, uh, call tomorrow. I'm so excited to welcome our, our guest co-host, Etta Hornsteiner. She's going to talk about three keys to redesign your time and elevate your life without burnout. And I love Wellness Wednesdays following uh, Take Charge Tuesday Business Power Call because we get all this business acumen, which I felt like a lot of today really could apply over on the Wellness Wednesday side of the house as well. But it is also applicable here on Take Charge Tuesday Business Call. So please, please join us on tomorrow for the Wellness Wednesday platform. And let's hear from Etta. Also, I want to say Take Charge Tuesday next week. Um, we're kicking off, I believe, June. Yeah, June's this week. Ah, oh my gosh, Henrietta Akalatsi uh, is going to be our guest. Listen, this is the nonprofit guru. If you even have an inkling of thinking about uh, starting a nonprofit or you have a nonprofit or you need a grant, things like that, I have no idea where we're going with uh, Henrietta. But what I will tell you, I know this, you're going to be blessed, you're going to be enriched, and you're going to walk away with some information. So bring your pen and pencil. Listen, God, golf, and girls, August mm -hmm. 18th through the 20th at Lake Lanier is going to be amazing. If you're already registered, thank you, thank you, thank you. But that's not good enough. If you're not responsible for at least one other person registering, you're not blessing your friends. You're not doing it. So I'm saying that. I'm taking that and I'm saying it very boldly. It's very important that you share with others and invite them to join us. We're so excited about this year. We have an amazing lineup. Uh, be certain that you go to our gcbnetwork.com. Go to our GGG webpage. This is the first year. It's the year of the double that we have uh, had a webpage. I've been wanting it and we finally did it and it looks really good. Our team is awesome. Rose, I give her credit for that. She worked with me and we partner and we got her done and it is amazing. So go out there and utilize that as an opportunity to share with other women the importance of attending God Golf and Girls 2023 with amazing keynote speakers. I'm so excited to announce that Lewis Registry has joined us as our second platinum sponsor for this year's event. Go out there and check out Erica Jackson, CYE, uh, Inc., uh, and all of the sponsors that we have, Angie Sella, uh, Heather Rosson, so many opportunities out there. Pamela Bridgman Bartell, our, our sponsors, and Lee Gant with Georgia United Credit Union is our luncheon sponsor. So great opportunities to go out there and celebrate our sponsors. And don't forget to check out the amazing speakers that are on the platform this year from Krista Parker, uh, from the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, Angie Seller, the Blinger Lady. She's going to be our featured speaker. Um, she had a dream to, she was blinging people's hair with pearls and crystals. A couple of weeks later, God said, uh, I want you to make the device. Three years later, I say blood, sweat, and tears. She came up with the device and she did 60 million. I didn't say 60,000. I said 60 million in her first run. Well, she's going to be in Georgia on the platform. The amazing Erica Jackson is going to be back on the platform. She and her husband have an awesome business out of Jacksonville, Florida. They're doing, you know, they do $100 million in contracts. So why am I telling you all this? Because this is a year of the double and we've got a platform filled with people that are running million dollar businesses 
and we get to glean for them. That's God, that they're coming and respecting the Georgia Christian Business Network platform. They're registering like everybody else because they want you to win in business and in life. And we're asking them because we want you to win in business and life. And God has allowed them to say yes. So now we're bringing it. Your opportunity is to sign up. So thank you so much. All of your links are over on the Facebook side of the house. Um, so thank you so very much, Jason. Close us out with your final point. Yes, and that's all wonderful news and events coming up from GCVN. I, I'm, I'm not a lady, Beth, but I'm fired up about awesome. <laughs> a lot of it. <laughs> As we you. close out, Beth, uh, there was just, I mentioned there was two scriptures uh, that I wanted to bring to our attention. So Hebrews 3.13 was the first one. And we'll end with 1 Thessalonians 5.11. Therefore, encourage one another and build one another up just as you are doing. In this fourth lesson, uh, speaking of the, the highlighter that the Holy Spirit is, it really grabbed my attention, just as you are doing. The Apostle Paul, um, through the writing, you can see that he made an observation and saw that encouragement was just a part of what they did. So when he said that, he said, look, the thing you've already been doing, continue doing, doing it. And so lesson four, encouragement should be part of our DNA. It shouldn't be situational. Uh, so we have the first lesson Beth talked about the, the, the consistency. Um, and then this lesson kind of speaks to well, once we kind of get consistent, once we realize there's an opportunity every day, once we understand what encouragement does, that's how it becomes part of our DNA as an encouragement engineer. And so this is that flow you were talking about earlier. I love it. I love it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jason. I think you have given us a shot of encouragement. Uh, my joy is full. I'm so thankful for your being here. And Bianca will work with you on getting you scheduled for part two. And mm -hmm. I'd love to see that happen. Um, we're right into June. It's probably going to be July, late July or something like that. I don't know what the calendar looks like exactly, but she'll fit you in and see if that works for you because we would love to have you back and share part two of this. This is just so encouraging and it's in alignment with what we have been focusing on in order to experience the double. Thank you all for joining us today. Uh, we went a little bit over but we're so thankful for the opportunity to have you. Thank you so much. Blessings to your wife. Uh, continue to move and move forward and um, to be a blessing. You're just doing amazing things at, while you're an engineer at your nine to five still, right? You're still doing that. I mean, God has a plan and you're a part of it. And God bless you, Jason. Thank you. And I thank God, I'm not sure exactly how we met, but I thank God for this connection. Thank you yes. so much. You made an old lady feel good today. It's, it's encouraging. <laughs> it gives hope, you know? Thank mm -hmm. you. Okay, take care and we'll talk soon. Bianca, you are amazing. Yes. I love you. Thank you so much for your support yes. here and on Facebook. And those of you on the Facebook side of the house and those that will watch the replay, we sincerely appreciate your support and putting God back in business. Visit our website, gcbnetwork.com. We're, we're intentional about it and we need your help. Join as a member of our, our, our a sponsor. We're putting God in back in business. We're like Nehemiah. We're gonna continue to build this wall and we won't come down. Take care, God bless you, talk soon. See you later, Jason. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.